right now and so we're recording and everything so keep it simple keep it casual because i'm gonna hit you with such the hard courses eva gomez oh <laughs> <laughs> well um first eva i want to say thank you for coming on bridges live with me and 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 talking about being the change you have to be which is funny because right before we got on air you were like, I'm, I'm, I'm a mess. I've been dealing with this police brutality, and it has nothing to do with fashion show. I just want. I don't have fashion shows. I have conversations that gets that gets really because it's about getting people the information that they need to have so they can be the change, right? That's right. That's right. And just keeping it real, you know. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And I do that all day long. I keep it real. Sometimes. I, I would say I'm too real, according to some people, because they can't handle it. <laughs> oh, here, come, here comes that Latino woman coming with all that attitude. <laughs> you know, Evie is in the house, and whatever comes from her, it comes from her heart, because she only means well for the greater good. Here's, um, let's let's first introduce yourself. Let's get that one real quick, and, um, and where you are, because we got to get you either running for the next governor of Indiana, or... Oh, or, we'll, but we'll start small, but please introduce yourself. Well, good evening, and thank you so much for uh, bringing me on, Dr. Dyer. It is a blessing and an honor to be here with you. I'm usually on your end doing the interviews with many people in the last 10 years. I don't know how many people, all different walks of life, I've interviewed and uh, met so many people in these last three decades of uh, doing humanitarian work and yeah. being a community leader and and that type of work, I, I don't take it lightly. And, uh, you know, thank you for, for bringing me on. But there's, a, there's a lot at, at stake, but there's a lot of things that are going on that uh, I wish they wouldn't go on. But we have to keep pressing on and learning, but we have to learn from each other. So, and, and I really, and, and, and like I said, we're having conversations. Let's get into it. Because we, yeah. we've talked before, it doesn't matter how, what people don't know what we talked about off air, but we talking about the political climate that we're in right now that is blinding people, causing conflicts with people, and things are still not getting done. Yeah, and you know, um, just touched a little bit on today, which right. it was phone call after phone call after phone call. Um, and dealing with attorneys, dealing with uh, with media, other news reporters, uh, TV reporters, and all that because of a police brutality case, a, pros- a possible cause uh, for that to uh, bring out into not just the airways, but in the community of what is happening. And uh, it's funny, uh, it's not a funny thing, but it's funny that um, I said, you know, hey, uh, well, let's, let's talk to the DOJ, the Department of Justice, and bring yeah. them on. The attorney's like, well, under this current administration, they may not even talk to you. I said, well, I beg to differ. They'll talk to me, and they'll keep it real with me if they could do something about it or not. Right. Because of the current administration. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I just heard that, right? So I did reach out to them. They did call me back, and and they did say um, they're asking some people to back off of certain civil rights cases because of the current administration. I, I was like, I can't believe I just heard that. I just can't believe I, I just heard that. So <laughs> let's slow that down because that just made me almost want to throw up. What does that yeah. mean? What does that mean? Exactly. That's what I was saying. What, what I was asking, like, what does that mean? So are you saying that you can't jump in and help? And they pretty much said, I don't know if I'm at liberty to say, but pretty much said to me, we got our hands tied right now. I was like, wow. Yeah, wow. (laughs) Wow, right. So kind of left me like a a, a dead end right there. But there is no dead end because that was just an entity that I wanted to include in this uh, case to make it stronger or to have some more support, right? Right. We think DOJ, Department of Justice, hence the word word justice. Thank you. Uh, So, and and as an advocate and as a... a, um, activist, uh, it behooves of me that something's got to give, something's got to happen. Too many times we hear that there's police brutality, but mm-hmm. I'm taking a step further and I have actually was interviewed by another news media today earlier, TV media earlier, 
um, because I'm making the moves. The family called me. There's several people involved in this, and, and this just tells me how government works. And we're talking local government, right? Uh, right. That says, let's sit at the table. I used to be the activist that used to march and the signs and the rah 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 and the no justice, no racist police. You know, no justice, no peace. I used to be one of those until I was pulled and said, sit back and watch and see how much that has made a change. Since then, in the last six years, I have been sitting at the table instead. And I think that as leaders, we should do that and not be afraid of who you need to sit at the table with and talk about solutions. So let me, let me ask you, and, and you, and you, and, and this is a, this is non-delicate question because it isn't. And, I, and, I, and I'm tired of people being so... Wishy washy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are we talking about white men? Are we talking about men? Are we talking about the white my, majority race? Because we have people have a hard time sitting at a table to talk about something they disagree with with only certain types of people. Mm. I would say all of the above, Dr. Yeah. Dyer, uh, depending on who you have to sit at the table with, right? Right, right. You can see that this incident just took place this weekend, because it's fresh, hot off the press. Um, that community is basically made up of black and brown. Right. You and me. Um, and it happens to be two police officers that do not look like you and me, although one could possibly look like me but it's very light-skinned, like me. So I'm not saying that's 100% certain that he's Caucasian. Right. The other one looked like he was. Um, and to me, I, I said they look to be like rookies, but they need to have better training. Period. I agree. Um, this, is, it, this is more to do with training than it has anything to do with color. Lack of training, lack of uh, cultural sensitivity, <laughs> um, <laughs> culture differences and cultural acceptance. Yeah. If you will. And so I did touch on several things of one, excessive force was not, should not have taken place. Two, there were quite a few rights uh, violated from the uh, alleged victim. And three, now we have children involved in this that are now going to suffer PTSD. And as an advocate for the youth, for children, I will speak up and speak out and do something. Because those children are now left with this paranoia, yeah. this trauma, the scars. When they see two police officers holding their father while they're beating him, while they're beating him. Now we got issues here because now we're dealing with children that have to be raised with fear, without if they don't get that right help, you know. And um, I was like, when I was shown the video, I was like, wow. It's like watching it in the news. Only the video was sent to me personally. It wasn't the news. It was the real thing. So what are we going to do about that? Are we going to be the bystander? Are we going to be the neighbor that does not want to share the information? Or are we going to be the ones that we need to make this change? And it starts now. We can't wait till tomorrow. We can't wait until the next Lake County this, city that whatever political person that can make that change. So, so, what, so, so what's the next step? Because, you know, when people have this in front of them, uh, they might not know where to turn to. Now, you being an advocate and you being in the community, you doing a lot of things that you have done in, in Indiana, you have the opportunity and the resources to least be heard. What about the people who feel like no matter how much they scream, they'll never be heard? Well, I will say to them, and I have, you will be heard if okay. you sit at the table with the right people there it is. next to you that are there to support you. Yeah, and I think that's that's it. That's why we go back to you as much as your gut hurts, as much as you may 
dislike something, especially when it comes to political parties. Like I'm not going to sit with this party or that party. If you if you're if you're not going to sit at a table to talk about a, a talk and have a conversation, then things will never things will not get done. Exactly. And let me just say, I purposely put something out there saying, as the conversation you and I had off the air, how uh, would you would you support me? Would you be next to me and mm-hmm. vote for me if I were to run for office? Right. Some of the responses that I got, I was like, really? They're like, oh, if you are, depending on what political party you run for, I'm like, really? Yeah, right. Not not Some because of me. Not because Please. yeah, not because they believe in you, it's because exactly. of the party you're gonna represent. Wow. Exactly. That's what I said. I said, Wow. And then of course on our radio show I spoke publicly on that and I said, Wow, some of you surprised me by your comments. <laughs> um, and I said, So you are not going to look at who is the person that's running and what can they do and have done and mm-hmm. have history. Right, right, right. right? That they've done things without an agenda. Now, so you say, be, if I run for, and they ran, they really went out there and said, if you run for Republican, then no. I was like, wow, okay. so you're judging me by a party. You, 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 you're you objectifying me. Exactly. So I was like, well, that leaves me a lot to think about, um, to educate, if you will, because they lack knowledge, they lack education as yeah. to. Well, we have good and bad in all the parties. Um, yeah. Liberal, independent, Democrat, and Republican. There's good and bad in everything, including our family. So it's like, wow, you guys really need to get educated. So how how do we... It's almost sometimes when I hear those things coming out of the people's mouths, when they are more talking about a party... And not about people, and 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 I've always said when you start talking politics, it should be people over policy. But when you start talking party policy, people and people are the third rung on the, the, the rail, and they keep getting pushed down, and it's lost. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm not here to say I'm in favor of one party versus another party because after this election, it left it left me a bad taste in my mouth all around together and I'm not judging the party but the people, people. that me in that party yeah right yeah and it's our actions that stand behind our words we can say all oh, what we want to say and sometimes I hear that wah 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 wah, wah. <laughs> I want to see your actions <laughs> you know they could say well EBE said she would do this and she backed it up with her actions or better yet, she didn't say, but her actions did. But we don't have an action party. There's no. First of all, I think we should get rid of parties. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and and I, I think. Agree with you on that after this last year's election. This year's election. <laughs> but that's not going to happen because the party feeds yeah. itself. You're right. For sure. For sure. And and I think as as you and I said, there's lack of knowledge into knowing yeah. why am I running for this or why am I voting more for this party versus the other party. And I, it's no it, it it probably has more to do with money, doesn't it? It let's yeah. it it yeah. it's everything to do with money. And there it goes again when we talk about again, a people are already falling short again. Now it's. It's 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 about profit, party, policy, then people and people and people and people still keep going pushing down at the at the bottom and then they say, well, I have passion for profit, for poli- for party, for policy, and then again people are going the people are still getting kicked to the bottom of all the things that people say. And yet, we're trying to, as a person like yourself, you're trying to advocate for people. Like the police brutality you're talking about. This is a people issue. This is not a police issue. This is not a, this is not against us against them and defund this and take away that. This is a person who was abused by another person in a particular uniform. That's it. Yeah. 
and you know, and, and, and of course, some people will go to the black and white. Okay. They will. They will. Uh, because that is a community predominantly of black and brown. And if these police officers don't look like us, then we're going to make that, we're going to throw that race card out, right? Right. Because I think that's the family. Uh, well, uh, what they look to be Caucasian, but one could go for Hispanic, Latino. But at the end of the day, lack of training will cause anybody to react in the worst way. And, and you know, and I know that some officers, not to, to defend them, but in their defense, they're suffering from PTSD. And it doesn't take much to trigger for them to act in the worst way, excessive force, and that's because their lack of training. And as many times I've been saying this, Dr. Dyer, that those police officers need to be evaluated and have a psychological evaluation once a year and seek treatment, therapy. Yes. We need, we need to help the people that are helping us. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So now we got children that are afraid of the police after what they saw. They're traumatized. And how do we help the children and make them feel safe that when they see a man in uniform, they're not going to feel safe, right? Right. And that's something that as the professionals, the police officers, have to really take that into account and say there's children in the presence. And they were being told, stop, officer, there's children. My children are watching. You know, I, I, as much as the things that I've known, things that I've done, doesn't matter who I am, what school I've been to, all this stuff, I'm telling you now, and I've said this publicly, and I'll keep saying it, when those lights come on, I'm afraid for my life. And I think that's what something happened uh, and triggered to that young man because it looked that he wanted to run, but he wanted to actually, from what I saw in the video, I'm no expert, but I saw the video several times, that he felt that he was already in danger yeah. Just by the way they touched him and grabbed him, yeah. that was the violation right there. And, 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 you know, with the things that I teach with when it comes to, you know, emotional reaction and stuff, if and, and everyone needs training. We need training on the civilian side, and we definitely yeah. need training on, 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 on the public service side. When it, but when it comes to the civilian side and you being pulled over, like, and, and I have, and my heart goes, it, it, it becomes erratic and then I have to go through training it, that I've done and teach to bring everything down to start thinking in here what they call the frontal lobe thinking because if I think in survival it's going to turn it's going to turn sideways and south it's not going to be good exactly I so agree with you and I looked at that video that it was more impulsive behavior reactionary and not putting any thought to it yeah. It was instead of de escalating as a police officer should, it helped, they helped escalate it. And using profanity and cursing the family out, telling them to go get the uh, back inside or they're going to get arrested. So, you know, uh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of change needs to take place because, as we say, enough is enough. And I'm not saying that all police officers are bad because I have a lot of my friends and acquaintances and friends and. and, and yeah. People that I respect right. in the force, right. county and city PD, here in the region. And so, you know, my respects to them, for them to serve and protect. But you have those that need a lot of help. They need better training. And, and that I can't say more. So, it, so what type of funding, when you get elected, and let's go right to it. Let's let's get this out there. Let's go... You're throwing it out there in that atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I, come on. I have to. No, here's... I want you to run. Okay. I want you to run for three reasons. Okay. And they're all personal. One, because you're a, 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 a highly intelligent human being who's an advocate for people. You're a woman. We need less testosterone and more thinking. And you're Latino. That's it. I mean, we we need a voice for people who don't get heard on that level. And and, and we, we had a judge that almost got, you know, put up there for the Supreme Court. She was 
that these things are important, not because you're only a woman and you're Spanish, but because of the other qualities and you just happen to be a woman and you're Spanish. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, and, and you're like, well, what if she was a white woman? You know what? I, nothing against that, but, and you could work inside of, you know, South Bronx, you know, Harlem and New York. You can work, you can live amongst all those people forever and still, and be an advocate and be a great advocate for human life. And yet, there's still a difference. It is. That is that is so true. And, you know, as a mentor and life coach, there's a lot of women that I've been mentoring, and these are women that are predominantly black and brown, that they feel inferior, that their self-esteem is way down on the ground, on the ground level, or not where it should mm-hmm. be because of the domestic violence, because of the ego mm-hmm. and the macho um, uh, uh, when it comes to the way they're living that they're forced to live a certain way and because they don't they don't know that there's a way out so here comes an aggressive latina as you say right Mm -hmm. that is not afraid to step up and speak up and and do then you know what come here let me talk to you let me put some sense in you but first of all let me tell you that you are a great person let me lift you up right and instead of tearing you down, you've been torn down enough. Enough. And there are men also that get abused. I mean, I'm not here just off of women. No. <laughs> but there are women, unfortunately. And then what I see when it comes to the police, they listen more to the man than they do to the woman in some cases. Yes. Okay? It doesn't matter their nationality because some Caucasian women have come to me to mentor them when they've been a victim of domestic violence and the police comes into their home and they tell him they're her to leave mm-hmm. and not the husband. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. I don't take things personal because I I love to go to sleep and have my peace. I don't let that steal my peace. But I know that things have to change. You know, when we say enough is enough, well, we need all to come to the table and let's not be afraid to talk. So what office are you running for? What did you What did did you decide? (laughs) I I have really... I I was told by a loved one that says, why don't you go independent? But you and I know... Where that would take me. That's not taking you anywhere. You, you, it you, won't take me anywhere. No, exactly. you, you're throwing it away. Yeah, yeah. And then I said, well, I'm uh, I'm more conservative. They're like, well, then run Republican. Yes. And then I have the majority that are my friends and acquaintances that are Democrats. But right now, I need to talk to my Republican government. Yeah. <laughs> to get what we need in our community in Indiana, which are driver's license to my undocumented people to my DACA people, to my people that have an ITIN, so that we can raise the economy. It makes sense. If Illinois did it, even though they're more Democrat, they're blue state, in Indiana, we're red. I mean, you know, but we can still talk to, at the table. What do we have to lose? Is this a tease to Indiana where it's predominantly farm people? Right. Predominantly white farm people. But who are their employees? Who are the farmers? The Spanish. Hello. Right. Because <laughs> I always tell people, when your strawberry prices go up, a white person picked it. If your lettuce goes up, it's a white <laughs> I know it's a... <laughs> I know it's a comical joke, and it could have more to do with the supply chain... But, you know, white people aren't out there doing the hard work on the farm that is being done. It's mostly the the workers. And now you're not going to allow them to get driver's license when they can pay taxes for these licenses and and put the money back in the economy. Why would... And they need to get to their job so they can go and pick those vegetables and fruits that you want them to pick. And I was one of those pickers many years ago. I was 15 years old. I worked in a farm. So I know being out in that heat... 90, 100 degrees, and you have no shade, <laughs> okay? And, and and that job is not for everybody. No. I don't care what people say. They tell me, you go back to your country. You're taking my job. You're taking my number in college. No, we're not taking anybody. We're not taking anything. anybody. <laughs> we're taking what you don't want, which is called crumbs. Right, right, right. And let's get real, okay? And it doesn't make it easy. 
to stay in this country. No. To get legalized. No. And don't make it easy. They, it's not, well, I've been here 20 years. I qualify just like that. They just changed yeah. the test. They just changed the test. It's harder. Yeah. The nationalization exactly. test is harder. <laughs> exactly. So, let me tell you, I've seen people that have been here 25, 30 years, and they have denied their residency over something that happened 20, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay? You got a ticket. Yep. DUI. Yep. Nope. You can't do it. You are now in danger uh, putting uh, people in danger in this country. Really, what about those that are doing everything illegal that are from this country? Now what? Now what? And are, and are costing you millions of dollars by incarcerating them. <sighs> Come on. Really? Well, we know why they incarcerate people. Oh, of course. We... By the way, you know, 1994, Biden. May I say more? Uh, I, he signed it. Yes. Do our own research Do, and right. not be sucked into this media. This media is a propaganda that they're making millions of dollars off of your you putting them out there yeah. and believing everything that you hear. I, I do have to, you know, back then, I don't know how many people did not sign it. We're gonna find out. You know, do some more due you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. you had a hard time not to sign that crime bill. Because they were talking about the crack thing, and we're not going to get why the crack was being brought in to fund extra wars for the. Uh, it, but they were talking about fighting the crack epidemic, right? And how it was exploding, and in in the in the blah blah blah. So it actually pushed everyone. It's almost like when people voted for to go to the war in Iraq. It was very few who did not say, oh, absolutely. So that that had to have been a t- tough one to vote against. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, often I have asked uh, when it's election year, can you give me the description that follows that seat? What does it take? What is it? What is it required of that person to run for that seat to know that they're the right people? Do you know that I'm still waiting for that? You're not going to get that answer. <laughs> and I'm like, well, how else are you going to educate the voters? No, what? So what you're going to my popularity because you like me? Because yep. I, I could be good for one seat and run for something else, and I may not be the best one, but because you like me, I can screw things up too. Absolutely, I'm not the right person for that seat. I, I actually turn. I actually think of a couple ways that we can look at a better, better way of looking at a presidential candidate or any seat candidate. Since we're so big into reality TV, let's turn this into United States Big Brother, Big Sister Watch. We either put them in a house and we get to oppose questions on the, and, and they don't get to leave for six months. <laughs> or, or we put them in charge of a major airport. Because an airport, like the international airports, it's a city within a city. There's there's a lot of things going on. And if they can't handle an airport, what makes you think they can handle the country? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and it'll, and like, again, we lack education in everything. Yeah. In everything. And, and, you know, this year, and I will say it's in your show, that I publicly have said, thank you, President Trump, for waking up my people. Yeah. I, I am friends. Uh, with directors and CEOs of national organizations, Latino organizations, that they say Trump did not wake up the sleeping giant, then what do you call it when the numbers increased that they applied for citizenship and they voted? What do you call that it, if it's not waking them up? You know, he, I respect wh- to those that said that they're not waking them up, that they've been awoke. Okay. Wh- whether, whether you liked it or not, he woke up people to do something, whether for or against, but he woke exactly. them up. Yeah. He woke a lot of people up and it caused curiosity for them to learn a little more about politics. Yeah. And they got up and registered and voted. Now we just this year it hit history. It made history in the making of the number of people that voted. Now we just can't now will people go back to sleep? Mm, that's 
a good question. And 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 there's and hopefully the shows that I do shows you do things that we keep saying, but people just kind of go sleepy after a while. It's like they they walk through the poppy fields in the Wizard of Oz, poppies right. and poppies, and, and they go right to sleep. <laughs> Because then it would say all of this for what? For you to go back to sleep? Yeah. I mean, you don't know. Wake up. And, and I hope that, you know, people are happy that Biden's in. You know, God bless him. But but he's got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. As the leaders that are making a difference in the local region yeah. have a lot to work. Have a lot to, to work in in the community. It's not it's not easy, but it's not impossible. But our work is never done. I mean, I've been in the grassroots for three decades. Now it's time for you to get at the table, and you still haven't you still haven't confirmed what seat you're going to run for. Well, I do sit at the table. I just don't sit at the table with the local politicians right now because it's about them. Yes. And I, I'm saying, in order, I have a voice. I don't need to be a politician. No. To be heard. Or yeah. and you don't need to, you don't need to be a politician to write for policy. That's what you said, and I'm looking more into that. Uh, but, you know, I moved into a new uh, subdivision, a new city, still in Lake County, Indiana. And I don't see anyone that looks like you or I. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, um, but it's okay. It's inviting. It's okay. Yeah. It's inviting because we need to step up and not say, well, we'll wait for someone else to do it. it, it yeah. Yeah, and, that's not a leader. And, and, you wait for someone else to do it. You're not the leader. I'm not going to keep you all night, even though I want to. I know this conversation is good. I, I didn't know what I was going to say well, because I don't like politics. I call them. Some people call them polytricks. I call them polytricks. <laughs> <laughs> That you have to be, and you got to put your foot in through the door. You have to say, I want you to talk about that right before we leave. Well, I believe that since I was a child, I took the initiative to do things that I wanted to see in others by doing it myself. Being the person to grab the mic and speak. Being the person that joined an organization and came to the table and spoke and said what I felt was needed to say. Not what they needed to hear, but... Well, not what they wanted to hear, but what they needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And in order for, I mean, I have been that child, and I am now in my 50s, still that child that says, wait, this is not enough. How about doing it this way? Wait, this is not enough. Look at what's happening now. You are more reactive than proactive. Mm -hmm. So in my way is becoming more proactive let's learn let's teach let's cultivate let's duplicate instead of being reactive yeah. many times people want to be the wannabes and I call them you know the what is it the um, the powers at be is yeah. what the usual term yeah. I call it the powers that want to be mm. because if they were the powers at be then you would see, see much of a bigger change that's for right. the greater good. That's right. And we wouldn't keep going around this mouse wheel exactly. over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, let's break the monotony. Let's stop going in circles and let's stop being around the bush and let's settle our differences and put our differences aside and let's work to see what we have a common ground on, which is to make it a better community, a safer community. Let's not just talk the walk, let's walk the walk. Or, or, or call them out and say, you don't want it to change because you're happy the way things are. You, exactly. You, you, yeah, you don't, you cannot have an in-between. You either want change or you're okay with the way things are. And if you're okay right. with the way things are, then say so. Right, right. Be, be man or woman enough to say it and admit it. But it's hard for someone to admit to their wrong. Until someone throws you, them under the bus, if someone would call it that, or says, hey, isn't this what you wanted? Right. Now, how's that working for you? Yeah. And, 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 
and and it's okay, you know. And I'm not going to say it's wrong, but if that's what you want, that's what you want because it's good for you. Right. right then that's right. that's all. Just come out of your face and say that. For me, exactly. Come out of that shell yeah. and be upfront and be real and say, I just haven't done it any other way because this is all I know and this is what I like. Yeah. And it's okay with me. I can still go to bed. Right. And sleep. Right. So. And, and I and I accept that, and I'll respect that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I often say I respect my enemies more for telling me the truth than my fam- my my friends for lying to me. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know. Eve Gomez, my goodness, woman, we will get you there if I have to uh, drive to Indiana myself and and, <laughs> and 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 make the flyers myself. We got a okay. ye- we we have a year. You only have okay. a year. Because your seat comes up in two. Yeah. Okay. So I've heard. Yeah. So you heard. Right. Heard. Okay. You're not the only one that's been telling me. <laughs> you, you can be that change in the political realm because you are not afraid. I become great friends with no matter who they are. I don't meet strangers. And I can make enemies because I'm too real, but that's not my problem. And if they're afraid of you, we'll use that. Hey. Thank you, dear. Get back, get back to your stuff. Get back to what you have to do. I know, I know. There's more work for you to be done there. Um, you're manning the station. Oh, tell us about your show when it's coming on, so people can catch that. Uh, well, first of all, I do have my own podcast uh, that's called uh, uh, Moments of Inspiration and Motivation with EBE. And that's on Spotify, that's on Google, uh, Radio Public, and all different platforms. Um, and that is to inspire. Uh, those are moments, and literally moments, 6, 7, 8, 15 minutes, depending on what the subject matter is, what the topic is. But mm-hmm. I'm speaking to your heart, from my heart to yours, to lift you up, to inspire you, and to motivate you, and make her a better you. Instead of beating on yourself, lift yourself up, and that's what I do with that podcast. I'm also... Uh, 10 years plus now with WLTH. It's uh, local radio, but we stream live. Uh, we're uh, two stations, AM and FM, and we come on Fridays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, and on Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. You will find Nuestra Comunidad, NWI, on Facebook, on YouTube, and uh, you just Google me, Eve Gomez, and you'll find all my connections on all social media platforms. I'm here to make that change, to be that change that you and I want to see. I'm here to help, and, and my work never ends. Um, a lot of things come to my phone, and now it's like, oh, this phone is going crazy. It's burning. I need that red phone that when it rains, someone else can pick it up. Not me. <laughs> you know, plus running a couple of businesses and uh, working like if I was a nonprofit. But, uh, you know, yeah. I've been yeah. I've been blessed to, to have that boldness. I'm a very bold woman that is not afraid of anything or anyone. Uh, because if you live in fear, then you're going to stay stuck yeah. and you're not going to grow and you're not going to learn. And leaders never stop learning. So there's always something new to learn. Yeah. And let's empower each other. Let's not, you know, I, I, I intimidate people, believe it or not, just by walking in the room, just my presence. And I'm okay with that. Before yeah. I wasn't, it would yeah. make me a little uncomfortable, but I understand why. It's the power within me that that's what they see and they are intimidated by it. But I invite everyone to come to the table. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to see and understand why you say what you say and why you do what you do. And let's go from there. You know, sometimes people react because of what they've known and what they've gone through. Thank you, Eve, for coming on Bridges Live with Dr. Paul. And we will have you back on again because we have more political talk to talk about. And we're going to call people out. I think we just should have a show where we just look at the political climate and say, point our fingers at and say, what are they doing with that? Cause we, it, because people don't do that enough. They don't look at it. They look at it and they pass it by. But if you start digging through the weeds... It doesn't smell right, and it's not right. So exactly what I'm saying. If it smells like it, looks like it, then it is. It is. Then it is a duck. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And one thing I want to encourage people and you as well that I'm here to make it easy for the language that not everybody understands. There is a language barrier. So therefore, if you're offering a service or you're offering 
whatever it is, you're a resource. You better have it in the language that the people that are predominantly in your community can read it and understand it because they're also paying taxes and they're also in need of your resources. Are you, are you, are you trying to say that they don't write it in the Spanish language? No. They don't. Why would they if they don't want you to know? That's the issue. That's why I'm the advocate. That's why I'm going to speak loud and bold and proud and saying, where is this for my people? Because that is a problem. You need to have it in Spanish. And when I blast them out like that, and I'm talking about the government and the government agencies, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And this problem is not mine. It will become yours because you are not serving the people that are in your community that voted your butt in to speak the language that they understand. So we got to we gotta keep pressing on and making sure that that happens. And pointing it out. Exactly. Oh, I don't have a problem doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, sister. Good night. Thank you so much. You guys be blessed. Be safe now. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you.